Hey, Rahul, we're here today to talk about intro topics for terminology services on Medplum. Excited. We're going to start with three things. First of all, what is terminology? Well, it's a deep topic, but I think let's talk a little bit about it. Terminology are, I don't know if you've heard of things like code systems in an EHR, like CPT coding or ICD coding. They're ontologies that are persist in, in the application. They help make data comparable across health records, and that's kind of their main function, and also used for billing and making sure that other divisions of a healthcare organization know about diagnoses. So that's what terminology is here. Yeah, uh, I've heard a lot about ICD and CPT because I know claims always have those yeah. two on them. Totally. And there's there's actually more than this. These are just common ones. CBT, you're right, is for billing. ICD is often diagnosis codes. So these are often, CBT often procedures that you'd bill for. ICDs are often diagnoses and other related. You know, LOINC are often diagnostics, like measurements, heart rate and vitals and stuff like that. And RX norm is ontology of medications. And That's what the RX is. Rx prescription. And of course, this is a really deep topic. There's lots of these. There's actually many more than is mentioned here, but these are the high level. So Metplum supports adding the search and code systems in general to your application. EHRs need this to properly function. So it's part of our core competencies. And I think this is one of the areas that devs have to learn a lot about and we hope to provide some utility. And so let's go into a few demonstrations. I'll show using our React components that have integrated these code systems via the API, how this works end to end. You can use it both from the API using our SDK or in React component form. Oh, nice. So Metplum ships with both the code systems themselves and UI components to help you use them? That's right. That's right. When people think code system, sometimes I like to encourage them to think type ahead. That's maybe a common delivery mechanism for a code system. So cool. This is, I'll, I'll show you exactly what I mean. So this is Medplum's sample provider app. And let's take a look here at the patient profile on this side of the page. So as you can see, patients have allergies, problems list, medications, even smoking status vitals. All of these have a deep utilization of the code systems in them. For example, a peanut is not just a peanut. This is not a string. This is a code. This is a SNOMED code. I didn't put SNOMED on the previous slide, but that's another important one to note that encodes a specific ontology that you can use to update your allergy for this patient. So this is an incarnation of terminology here, as you can see in this type ahead. It's scoped, it's exact for this use case, allergens, and you can embed them in your application as you see fit. So allergy is a common example of one. Got it. So I, like a provider, a doctor could type latex there, but Behind the scenes, it gets stored as that number that I saw in the little gray box. That's right. It gets uh, stored as the number and its code system. So it's like, this is a SNOMED code with this number 11701, et cetera. Got it. Um, and that's what allows it to be like well understood by other applications as well. If you are, for example, synchronizing this data to another EHR, you'll be able to consume it readily. Problems list, here's a diabetes. So here is an example of a very advanced one in that here's, you see ICD-10, diabetes insipidus, diabetes mellitus. And then there's also SNOMED in here. So you can see a combination of different code systems that are used in a kind of unioned form to capture this specific type of data. So capturing medical conditions, core part of the chart, we support this functionality. And um, you can use tools to like scope these sets down if you have a, a specific clinical use case, or you can have the full ICD-10 versioned codes as well as SNOMED. 
Got it. And like if I was a doctor, I would know kind of the difference between just a general type one diabetes versus nephrogenic diabetes. And I would pick the right one. Yes. And it depends on the context. And it's really something you should ask a practitioner (laughs) for guidance on, but this is meant to be, yes, entered by a health professional. Um, And are there any non-clinical considerations when selecting the right codes? So I think that the codes are related to reporting. So for example, if you need to report that all diabetes patients in your practice got XYZ treatment, then you need to know that they had diabetes. And so you need to tag them correctly (laughs) with the ontology as having. So even non-clinical context, just for administrative reimbursement and quality measures, having that great structured data is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Medications are similar. Uh, Amox. They're also hard to spell. Here, I got one, amoxicillin. And these have, you know, a lot of subtlety to them as well. These are like specific um, delivery types of amoxicillin, even though it's the same active ingredient, they have different packaging and different delivery form. So you can also scope these searches to be more general or more specific and map them. It's a common common use case and managing the meds list, normalizing the meds list is a part of many EHR implementations. I'm going to switch modes here a little bit. How this is stored if you just look at the raw json so um, allergy and so let's take a look at if we just look at the details of this specific data point this is an allergy and it has the code but if you look at the data structure itself you can see that the code system here it is represented here with this ontology and this system. This is, you know, up to the standard, the the FHIR G10 standard that is required for medical records in America. So if you use the type of heads properly and then use them to annotate your FHIR resources, your implementation will be correct and have all the downstream benefits that you would like to see. And MedPlum's React components have all of these built in. So code systems along many axes, things like clinical status, and those are kind of more table stakes, as well as terminology itself. This one shows it. The built-in React components that we have for all of our basic FHIR resources are also linked so that they have access to the code systems as well. And you can use it either programmatically or via our React components. Got it. So this application, which is the MedPlum app, is using... The MedPlum's React components that I can just grab that autocomplete and put in my own app? Yep, that's correct. And so it re- just can really help to streamline usage of these type of heads and usage of the base spec in order to get that great high quality data that drives a good implementation. So yeah. yeah thanks for showing me this. This is a, It seems like a lot of functionality comes a lot out of the box. Yes. Hopefully this really re- reduces the lift to getting these implementations just right. And I'll also mention that these code systems, they're versioned, we manage them and actively update them so that you're on the correct version that's required for the regs, for example, 2024. Thanks so much, Freshman.